Let me just get my face up here so you can all see me. Hey, it's Alex Glassy. So much awesomeness going on right now. I just can't begin to tell you. Uh, so pleased to have you all here uh, online. And I can see people are figuring out how to use the chat. And uh, so there's Tom, Daniel, Connie, number wise, Brenda, Deb. Hey, listen, it's great to see you all. And I'm going to let everyone else know how you can get access to the chat as well. Um, for those of you who, uh, by the way, this uh, we're live streaming not only here at F2F, but we're also live streaming into YouTube Live as well. So if you're watching it on YouTube Live, let me just get you a, a screen uh, here. So if you're watching this uh, from YouTube Live, uh, you can right now on September 19th, you can actually come in and join the, uh, the, the whole thing live and face-to-face at f2f.live slash Alex G. There is the uh, URL right there. And um, yeah, let me just do this. There we go. And um, what, that, what that allows you to do is not only be live, but also to be able to in, get involved in the chat, uh, not only the text chat, but also face-to-face uh, -face, um, uh, with your camera and your mic if that's what you want to do. So, um, so much to do, so much good stuff here. Uh, I am just, and I'm so pleased to have you all here. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot for being here. Um, let me take you through what we're going to do. And um, then it, it, you're welcome to put in your questions on chat. I'll be keeping an eye on the chat and trying to respond to that as well. But I got a, I got a number of things going on here. If you've clicked the ask to join button, what that means is you've asked to join the show. And so I know some of you is a button, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people have done that already. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait to bring you in until the very end. Now, if you do not wanna be kind of here face to face with me, and you click that button by accident, then you can just say leave, and you can uh, you can you can get out of the uh, queue, and you'll still watch, and you'll still hear. So just to let you know, we'll go through all this stuff in a, um, in a in a couple of minutes, okay? But for right now, welcome to Business Pro TV. It is September nineteenth. My name is Alex Glassy. I am delighted to have you here on this the uh, first of twenty six episodes that we're going to run uh, using face to face live. Uh, between now and December 19th. Let us get cracking. So first of all, who is this for? Um, this show in the next 20, this and the next 25 episodes are for business owners. And regardless of whether you're a startup, whether you've been in business for two or three years, or whether you've been going for five years or more and are running what looks like a successful a company, we are going to be talking about absolute business fundamentals that every business owner should know. And I guarantee you, no matter how many years you've been in business, that there will be things that you'll learn here that you didn't know and things that will um, that will generate additional revenue for you, additional gross margin for you, and will also increase your customer satisfaction. Those are the three primary goals that I'll be focusing on over the course of, the, of these 25 weeks. Also, if you're a business advisor, if you advise businesses, you should absolutely be here. There are all kinds of tips and tricks and advice that I know you're going to steal uh, absolutely ruthlessly, and you're welcome to do that uh, so that we can all make the world of business ownership a better place for, uh, for, for, for everybody. Okay, so if you expect more from your business, if you expect more for yourselves, and if you want more for your family, more time with your family, and uh, more freedom, uh, financial freedom for your family, then you are absolutely in the right place and you are welcome. This is a story, as much as we're gonna talk about business fundamentals and cash flows and all that good, boring stuff, um, this is ultimately a story about transformation. It's a story. And uh, the hero, of course, or the heroine, is you, is the business owner um, and we're going to walk the path together and we're going to help you build your own story. Along the way, we're going to talk about uh, good guys who are your customers. We're, all we're not going to talk so much about the bad guys. Uh, we used to back you know, 10, 15 years ago, we would talk about the bad old competitors. We're not going to talk so much about competitors and you'll understand why as, as we get into discussions about competitors. But you got the good guys, your customers, you got the bad guys. And we're going we're gonna to create this storyline that allows you, the hero or heroine, to go through. But 
really in any story, all the best stories, it isn't about uh, the conflict with the good guys and the bad guys um, or, you know, reaching an end point or anything like that. It's really a story about in transformation. And that's what I hope for all of you is that as we go through this process over the next 91 days, that you will experience an internal transformation that uh, you'll experience insight and ahas, and you'll be changed um, profoundly, profoundly for the, uh, for the better. This is the uh, business ownership is an intensely, um, an intensely human experience. And um, that's, that's where I'm going to start from right there. Okay. What will you achieve? Well, you know what? I can tell you what I want you to achieve, but what I'd rather do is I'd rather start with you. And as you know, a couple of, over the last couple of days, I've asked you to let me know what you what you expect out of this course. And so you've responded. And so I've taken some of those comments and I'll put them out here. So here's these are your words. Uh, some of you have said you want leadership skills. This was a theme that came up several times. Absolutely. You know what the definition of a leader is, right? A leader is someone who just starts walking. And if you turn around and look back and someone's following you, then you're a leader. And I think leadership uh, comes, arises naturally. You know, we think that, well, we need to go to leadership school or you take a leadership course and all the rest of stuff. No, we have an idea. We have a passion. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to create focus and we're going to create the steps to achieve our, 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 our passion and our goal. And I think people will naturally want to want to follow us, um, whether they be staff whether they be customers, whether they be people, other people in your community. 10% growth. So someone was very specific in 2018, they want to have 10% growth. It's awesome. Very clear goal, easily measured. Uh, we're absolutely going to help you get there. An improved business plan, for sure. And you know that there's a section here that we're going to talk about planning. Uh, but everything, planning doesn't start with just, hey, I need money, so I got to go write a business plan, right? Planning starts at the very, very beginning. Planning starts today with thinking about where we're at, thinking about who we are, and thinking about where we want to go. That's where planning starts. And so absolutely, we're going to show you four different ways of planning, depending on the type of plan that you need. Secured investment. Okay, I need a business plan in order to secure investment. Absolutely, that will be a part of our planning. But the, again, the job starts today. A business and entrepreneurial mindset. Wow. Wow. Um, that just goes right to the heart of what the definition of a business owner is. And we're going to come to that in a minute, but absolutely. We have these two mindsets, right? We have this creative, woohoo, got to go build something. And then we have this other whole skill set that's needed in order to bring a business to fruition and to make it successful. And so absolutely, we are going to be talking about every day, a business and entrepreneurial mindset, focus, clarity, prioritization. I love you, whoever said that, exactly right. A client pipeline and a balanced workload. This balance between uh, life and, uh, you know, the rest of your life, your family, uh, your, your partner, your spouse, uh, your friends, community, all those things along with, um, with the work that needs to go into building a business. Absolutely. We're going to try to find some way to balance it with you. And a client pipeline, of course. Uh, building client pipelines, doing marketing stuff all starts again with understanding, you know, knowing who you are, uh, knowing which, which way you're going to be going. It starts today. Become a community name for desserts. So someone's very clear. And I can't remember what city you're in, but you're very clear. Got a dessert business going up and running. Uh, I think you're fairly young, a uh, year or two, but you want to become a community name for desserts. When someone thinks about desserts, they're thinking about you. Absolutely. And I've got a treat. Can I say have a treat? I've got a treat for you because i got a co-producer who uh, I'm going to introduce you to in about uh, five minutes. And uh, well, I'll let her uh, tell her background. But uh, Steph, uh, you know now that you're going to be talking about helping this person uh, become a community name for desserts. Easy and efficient marketing strategy, right? You know what? There are a billion tools out there. It's like it's awful. It's awful the number of marketing tools that are out there, the number of people that will tell you yeah, they'll help you with their marketing strategy. But I will tell you that it starts again here, understanding who you are, what you're offering, who you're trying to serve, and, uh, and in what way. That's where your marketing strategy starts. And we're going to talk about a little bit about channels and about uh, segregation and that type of thing, segments, segmentation. Uh, 
Grow business by working smarter, not harder. You are in absolutely the right place. Um, and then finally, somebody said this. And again, I'm trying to treat all your comments with, uh, not trying, I will treat all your comments with in confidence. But somebody said this, look at this. Whoops. I put your mouse here. I hope to get my business more focused so that I can better evaluate if new opportunities meet long-term goals or if they are a rabbit leading me down the wrong path. Okay, whoever wrote that, I know I have your name, I have your email address. I totally love you. That is fantastic. And that's exactly, you know, we as entrepreneurs, as creative people, there are opportunities that come by our desk all the time. There are way more opportunities that you can shake a stick at. It's not like it, like it's an opportunity that are like buses. There's always another one coming along. It's like opportunities are like, I don't know, mosquitoes. They're just like, they're just coming at us. And in order for us to succeed, we simply can't uh, pursue all of them. We have to pick one and pick another. So this sense of focus and prioritization and then making sure that uh, we've got uh, the right thinking so that we can carefully select those opportunities. Perfect. Thank you for that. So that, those were your comments. And again, I, I'm sorry, I got tons of stuff and um, I, I had to hand pick, uh, you know, some of those comments. So if yours weren't in there, it's okay. I read everything that you send me and uh, I'll uh, just keep, keep coming at it. Just keep doing it. And uh, I'll be doing this every single uh, lesson. And so you'll, you'll get a chance to see your comments come up, but it really helps to inform my thinking and it really helps to tailor my uh, lesson to make sure that it's meeting all of your needs. So thank you for that. So here is the kind of the formal part. You know, what I want, what I want to deliver is information, tools and resources. So those are the basic things. Those are kind of table stakes. I'm going to deliver those and they're all going to be helpful and you're going to use them. Uh, you're going to use them for the life of your career, of your career as a business owner. I'm, I'm sure of it. Out of that, though, what I want you to do is to develop some insight. I, you need to get some insight and I want you to get insight into yourself, first of all, into uh, your business, your customers, uh, where you're going, opportunities, um, the greater world. And then out of that insight, want you to get focused and then once you've got that focus uh we're going to develop some skills that allow you to build a roadmap and not a roadmap that like, oh, i'm going to do these things and get here in five years i'm going to do these things over the next 91 days and i'm going to just bear down on 91 days and i'm going to get there i'm going to talk a lot about this 91 day focus which by the way is the exact length of this particular course 91 days i want you guys to just commit and focus on doing the best you can to get your skill set up in the next 91 days. Out of all that is going to come a sense of confidence, a sense of confidence that you know what you need to know, that you can sit with your banker, you can sit with your customers, you can sit with your product development people, you can sit with your staff, and you know that there's no secrets out there that you don't know. You, you're, you're a confident business owner. And when you have that confidence, when you speak confidently, then everyone is going to follow you. Your staff are going to follow you. Your bankers are going to follow you. Your investors that are all and your customers are going to go. This person knows what they're talking about, and they speak with that calm confidence. Um, okay. Yeah, storytelling, of course, uh, which is uh, be able to tell your story with confidence. And then, because it's a business. There's lots of things that I want to talk about from a human perspective, but because it's a business and because our business ultimately depends on making money and making cash flow and making payrolls, we are going to focus on, we're going to talk a lot about revenue, we're going to talk about gross margin, and we're going to talk about customer satisfaction. So those three things, we're going to keep, those things are kind of inextricably linked in my, uh, in my, uh, uh, in my brain. <laughs> and I can see that uh, Mark Storger showed up and is adding uh, humorous commentary into the chat. So I hope you're <laughs> Hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> hey, Mark, good to see you. And then uh, finally, um, yeah, someone asked me, several people asked, is there going to be a certificate? Well, as if, uh, you know, making um, uh, gains in revenue and profitability and customer satisfaction wasn't enough. Yes, if you want a certificate uh, on the 91st day, then I'll give you an opportunity to get a certificate. And uh, that's a good thing. And um, I'm happy to do that. Okay. Uh, how will we do it? Well, we're going to be exploring fundamentals and we're going to be, which 
quite frankly, are profound. And we're going to talk a little bit about how profound they are and why most businesses don't understand this stuff and get them, uh, most business owners and they get themselves into trouble. And we're going to use your own company as a living case study. So I, I suggested in my emails to you that you should have uh, a notepad, you should have a pen or pencil, and um, I hope a favorite beverage beside you as well because it's the evening, wherever you are in some cases. Um, but we're going to use your company as a living case study. And so I want you to write down your thoughts as you're going along. I, you know, don't share them with me. I, you know, we don't need to see them. No one else needs to see them. You're, I'm happy if you share them with us. Uh, and we do want to hear uh, your, your contributions. But a lot of this stuff is, is personal. And, uh, but do write it down. It's writing it down. There's power in, um, in writing it down. And, so, and even though there's an overall syllabus, um, which we're going to follow, and I'm going to go through it right now, uh, this course is going to be so much better with your participation, and you can participate in a bunch of different ways. One of them is the chat right now, and uh, we'll, we're going to come back to how to how to how we're going to use that. Um, but anyway, think about ways to participate: chatting, staying after hours to talk with me face to face, uh, and then I'll have surveys from time to time. And I, you know, do share, do comment, uh, and you can email me at any time. So we're going to start off with uh, the next uh, this day and the next four days with thinking about the big picture, aspiration and customers, who our customers are, who do we serve, how do we serve them, what are we on about, who are we really? We're going to get into pricing. I think it's six or seven episodes. This is fundamental. This is, of all the courses that I've ever uh, delivered, this is the this is a favorite uh, series. Um, it all, it's all linked, but we're going to focus in on, on pricing. The things you do here will feed right into pricing. Then we're going to have Halloween night on the 31st of October, the scariest night of the year. And we're going to talk about the scariest thing in business owners world, which is financial statements. And um, uh, anyway, it's going to be it's going to be fun. Uh, so stick stick around for that. Cash flow will follow again. It seems like this is the boring stuff, but this is the fundamental stuff. And we're going to lighten it up. We're going to make it interesting. And we're, we're going to give you tools. Uh, that are going to make your understanding of your own cash flow, not my cash flow, not theoretical cash flow, but your own business's cash flow. And I guarantee you, you're going to come out of that with one or two or three fundamental pieces that you're going to go, I know that I can improve my cash flow today because of things there. A planning, then we're going to get into planning, different ways of telling your story depending on the audience. And then, uh, and the audience could be yourself and your own staff. That's the first and most important audience. And then, of course, there are external audiences, and we want to be able to talk with those in the language that they're that they're used to hearing. And then, finally, on uh, December nineteenth, uh, just in time for a break, a nice long break, and then just in time to get uh, come roaring into January second, twenty eighteen. We're gonna we're gonna spend we're gonna spend an hour talking about how to get ready for twenty eighteen. Um, and, uh, and you're going to see all the stuff that you've been working on for these previous 25 episodes are going to just naturally roll into this plan. You're going to be able to take and grab and then uh, make 2018 a freaking killer year. Seriously, that's what it's all about. Okay. Um, finally, uh, we've got, um, oh, a little bit more. So how are we going to do it? Each lesson is going to be 45 to 60 minute sessions of kind of formal stuff. And um, uh, I'll start off each lesson with a review of the survey responses. Uh, then we'll have the new material. Then I'll have after hours. So after hours is cool. It's using the technology that I'm about to introduce to you so that you can come on and I'm just going to put away my slides and I'll be sitting here and with my camera on and you can bring, you can come on with your camera and you can Tell me about a, uh, your own situation. You can ask a question. You can get clarification. You can just say hi, and we can get two, three, four, five, six, seven people talking about uh, various things and people coming and going. So that's what after hours is all about. Just after the session, I'll stick around as long as people need. Well, until my wife calls me for dinner, and then I'm done. Um, and then following that, um, I'm going to send you either an email. I'm going to send you an email after this one with resources and probably another another survey, uh, but and a, as well a recording. But then I'm going to create a page, and uh, or I have created a page, and, and I'll tell you where that page is at the end of the session. And you can go there, and you can see the recording, get access to the material. But it also means that if you miss a session, I hate when you miss it because people say, ah, 
I can miss that because I know he's recorded it and then you can always go back and rewatch it. Okay. Never happens. Best thing is commit to this thing. Commit your time. It's one hour twice a week, right? Commit your time. But the recordings are there if it's unavoidable. Okay. What do you need to do? Well, the first thing is just, to, as I say, just to commit to show up, right? Take notes, actively participate, do the survey, chat, stay for after hours, do a little homework, right? Do 15 minutes or 20 minutes of homework. Uh, when I when I ask you to do that, it's all about you and your business, right? You're not doing it to like I'm not, it's not homework that okay I told you this about cash flow. Now you got to prove to me that you know about cash flow. No, I want you to take the tool and plug in your numbers from your financial statements so that you can take a look at your own cash flow and so that you can go, wow, here's three places where I can actually increase my cash flow either today or in the next sixty days, right? That's what I'm trying to do. Um, the other thing is that there's there's power in uh, connecting by uh, uh, chatting. There's power in connecting by coming online. There's power in writing stuff down. And there's power in the community that we're building. You can see down below somewhere, you can see a little number 60, a little looks like an I and a number 60. So there are 60 business owners uh, on right now, and they are from all over the world. We've got uh, Finland is here, Argentina is here. We've got all over Canada, all over the USA. I think we got Philippines here. Uh, if you're if you haven't figured out yet how to do the chat, you will in a second. We'll, we'll right. Tell me uh, uh, tell me where you are. Um, okay. If this was, I normally charge. I normally would charge two thousand U.S. dollars for a course of this size per person, and uh, and then I would put a money back guarantee on it. But because this is free, um, because it's been totally supported by another company, then uh, I, I can't give you your money back. Uh, but I will say this. I focus on delivering results to you. And um, I guarantee that this course will give you everything you need to make a profound difference in the quality of your business and the quality of your life and your family's life. And whether that be 10% increase in revenue, 50%, 200% difference in uh, sales and gross margin. What I want to do is I want to give you the tools. I want to work with you to figure out what those goals are. And then, you know, then off you go. Right. So uh, my goal has always been to make sure that you have bottom line improvement, not just rah, rah. Hey, ooh, I feel good. Uh, that, that glassy guy sure knows how to make me feel good after a session. No, this glassy guy wants you to feel good when you look in your bank account. Okay. So who am I? Uh, some of you will know and some of you won't. Let me give you just a quick background. So I started off in 1980 uh, after high school, getting into the software business in Winnipeg, Canada, and uh, worked in the software business for a few years and then uh, became a consultant with one of the big firms um, who is now Price Waterhouse Coopers. I did that for, for five years. And I left that firm when I ended up having kids. I ended up backing in to entrepreneurship like so many of you. Uh, I didn't go out there thinking, oh, I'm going to create a huge widget and make a ton of money. And no, most entrepreneurs, that's not how we start our businesses. We start our businesses because we need flexibility or freedom or something going on in our personal lives that 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 forces us to can't just do that kind of nine to five shtick. And what I found is that uh, I ended up with uh, uh, my family situation changed and I ended up looking after my kids who were four and three at the time. And I just needed time and flexibility I could not get with my downtown job. And so um, I started a software company uh, called Careware Software, and I ran that for a number of years. And that gave me the ability to look after the kids and, um, and had the flexibility and the freedom, had the ability to put an office right beside the kids' school and walk the kids to school every day and then pick them up at the end of the day and bring them home and bring them into the office actually for an hour they had a little place there and uh, the staff all knew them. And then we, we went home in the evening and, and I, you know, did the family thing until they went to bed at 8.30. And then I got to do the business owner thing until two in the morning, right? So that was Careware. And then I sold that company in 2000 and went to work for the person, the organization that bought that company. But what I found was that I was ruined as an employee, right? So that's what self-employment does to you. Oftentimes, uh, it just totally ruins you. And I, and I very quickly... Within a year, I found myself starting another company called MedCenter, and we were uh, we were an online company uh, selling uh, selling stuff all around the world. Had a great 
had a great run for uh, three and a half years, sold it, sold it successfully, and uh, then took some time off and went and got an MBA uh, from, uh, from Kellogg. It was a great experience, great experience. Ironically, started another company while I was doing my MBA, and it was a flame out. This company number three was a disaster. And, um, and uh, yeah, so I've been there. I've, I've had some okay wins, and I've had some, a big win, and I've had some flame outs. And, man, those hurt. Um, and then uh, I started Strappad, another company. And Strappad's still going today. In fact, you can still buy Strappad products, and we're going to talk about Strappad when we get into the, uh, the planning. And along the way, I always had a, uh, an advisory company, so I was always uh, helping out uh, here and there with, with, uh, with uh, various uh, companies. And with Strattpad, I was introduced to small business owners all around the world. Gave me huge insight. Uh, Strattpad is now being used by over 150,000 business owners like you and business advisors in over 120 countries. And so I've got some just incredible insight um, and experience and exposure to people from all over the world. It's awesome. Um, I feel very, very privileged. And then um, I teach here in, uh, at uh, University of Victoria. And along the way, I teach entrepreneurship to engineers. And along the way, over the last year and a half, uh, met up with a couple of uh, young guys who were developing some new technology. And that's the technology that we're using right now, the face-to-face. And so I'm now a, um, a, a co-founder in that new company, Face-to-Face Broadcasting Corporation. And they're the ones, of course, that are supporting uh, this. So we're going to segue a little bit into that. Oh, by the way, uh, please, uh, if you don't, if you're not uh, linked, if you and I aren't linked up together on LinkedIn, please do that and go find all, find all about me there. And then let's uh, let's link up there. It's a great way to stay in touch. And then fundamentally, I believe in the strength and courage and vitality of business owners. Business ownership, I think, is a profound calling. And I am delighted to be in your company just in general and particularly today and delighted to be able to support you however I can. So uh, thank you for the privilege of, um, of letting me be here with you. Okay, so let's get into, um, by the way, just to let you guys know, I know I got a couple of tech guys, my co-founders here, and uh, seems to be a little bit of delay in some of my slides, so just to let you know. So the, the tech that we're using right now is called Face to Face F2F, uh, and uh, it is um, it's free for you to use too, and so you'd be delighted to, to have you use it. It's in beta. We're expecting to have a release in the next couple of days, we'll go from beta one to beta two, um, and um, it is... It does this. It allows you to meet, teach, do webinars, live stream with up to a million people online without any lag. And so when you, when I'm talking here, you're actually hearing it immediately. If you're watching right now on YouTube, there'd be uh, probably a 15 to 30 second delay in YouTube. And there's no ability for you to then communicate back. So there's no lag. There's no downloads. It's completely browser based. Today, it's it's in Chrome only. Um, however, in the next week uh, to two weeks, by the end of September, it'll be running on all browsers, all devices. And um, so you'll be able to watch it in Safari in your iOS device, um, your iPad or your iPhone, or you'll be able to watch it on Fire, you know, Firefox or Edge or uh, Safari on a Mac, for example. No downloads, completely interactive because there's no lag. And you'll see me doing this. You'll see me have a chat with, uh, with uh, my co-producer in just a minute. And it's completely, it's completely free. Um, completely free. And we're going to talk about this business model in, in, as we go through, but face-to-face uh, -face is an example of me being able to put into practice some of the things that I try to preach to other business owners. So I hope you enjoy using it as a viewer, and uh, I hope you uh, go ahead and just go to f2f.live and sign up there for, for free yourself. Now, what I'd love you to be able to do is in order for you to be able to fully communicate with me, uh, you need to sign up once. And you can do that right now. If you go to the login button that's at the top right, top right of your screen, just click that and then log in with either your Google or your Facebook account. And, uh, and then you're able to chat and you're able to come in and join me uh, in the after hours as in the after hours session. So while you're doing that, uh, I think now's the time that I get to uh, introduce you to Stephanie Gorchinsky. So Stephanie's a young uh, lady that I met in um, Toronto 
uh, a what is it, a year and a half ago, Stephanie? You have to ch make sure your mic's, there we go. Yeah, I got it, I got hey, it. Hey, Steph, yeah. I'm learning like all you guys are, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it was a year and a half ago. Was it a year and a half ago? Holy cow, holy cow, where's this year gone? Yeah, so <laughs> Steph and I have just been, have been chatting for, uh, you know, a, a year and a half since then. Uh, she's an entrepreneur in her own right and has some uh, some particular insights into entrepreneurship. And I just thought that rather than me, you know, like who wants to watch me for 26 hours, we'll uh, straight, we'll get somebody else in here and to be able to uh, just riff back and forth on uh, various topics. Steph is also going to help out by monitoring some of the chat. Uh, we got And we also have a technical person monitoring chat. So uh, Steph, hey. Hi there. Where, Hi there. You're in Toronto. Now, how far away is Toronto from Victoria, from where I am? All the way across the country. So I that's not I didn't I didn't understand that that would be a required answer that I would have to have right now. <laughs> so you're like, I, I'm an entrepreneur. Do I have to know the kind of math of geography? Isn't that like high school? I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's like four thousand kilometers, I think, which is what twenty five hundred miles. I'll believe you. I'll trust you on that. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So listen, tell me a little bit about, like where we met. I know we're at this business thing, and and, and tell a little bit of just tell me tell us about yourself. So I am, my name is Stephanie Gorchinski. I am in Toronto, of course, as, as Alex said. I am uh, a 20 year veteran, uh, a Red Seal chef in the culinary industry, uh, primarily uh, working in big chain line restaurants on a line. And in the last 10 years, especially of that, I've really focused and gone into the food sector. I'm also a holistic nutritionist and a life coach, life mentor, empowerment mentor. I've got a whole bunch of other things that are in sort of like my holistic toolkit that I add and I bring to the entrepreneurial table. Um, so, and I did have a catering business as well as uh, the most recent and sort of my my big prize as my baby, uh, an ice cream company here in Toronto called Pleasantville. Um, so awesome! Yeah. So you've, so been, so you're, so you've you've been like the, you've got a craft, and we're going to talk about this in just a minute as we get into kind of what is a bit. But you've got a craft, you got a skill that you you are a Red Seal chef, right? Yeah. Yes. And I think, I mean, and, and, and you and I have talked about this, but I think one of the angles that I've always come through this and how I got to entrepreneurship was I worked in those restaurants and I kept innovating my position and that's not what they want. And so I decided like you, I love the freedom aspect, but also as a chef for food, I always saw a way to innovate the plate. And I said, hey, freedom is great, but also these products at a certain point aren't out on the market. Why don't I try this? And uh, and that's kind of how I got here. But I don't know, maybe like a lot of you, maybe like some of you, maybe like I think it's, it was Claudine that's on the chat that was the um, the other ice cream or, or, or a sweet dessert person. Yeah. Um, I'm a creative, so I kind of have, I've always felt like I have no business being in the business arena, um, funny enough to say it that way, because well, that's the I don't whole, have- That's the whole right brain, like uh, creative is right yeah. brain, right? And yeah. the business ownership is like, it's left brain, isn't it? Yeah, and it's like it's like asking me how many kilometers between here and Victor, I'm like, you hear crickets at a certain point. So uh, I can make a I can make a mean uh, pint of ice cream, but if you ask me to do a balance sheet, I run for the hills. And uh, now I can't do that, especially wanting to be strong in business business ownership and leadership. There is a large difference that I've learned over the course of my ten years, but twenty year history, just with being an independent adult human on this planet experiencing life, there's a big difference between creativity and ownership. And I think that that's, if I can, for myself, help marry the two with some responsibility, some accountability, some empowerment, and then if I can help do that for other people, I mean, then awesome. we've aced the game, so. Awesome. Well, listen, yeah. it's, it's great to have you aboard. Um, Thanks for having uh, me. <laughs> no, no, it's awesome, it's awesome. And uh, let, me, um, let me get back to the slides. And then um, I'm going to leave your you know, leave your mic on. If, you, if there's something else that's coming up on the chat, then uh, feel free to, to to holler, and then we'll see you in the after hours in uh, in a few minutes. Perfect, and lovely to meet you, everybody. If you have any questions, just write it over there, and I will uh, I'll read it and I'll get it communicated. Beautiful. Hey, thanks, Jeff. See you in a minute. So, by the way, I'm seeing some. Um, I'm seeing uh, just keeping an eye on the uh, the chat a little bit. I'm seeing there's some technical stuff. Um, yeah, make sure that you're using Chrome and uh, our, my apologies for uh, any uh, issues that you're uh, experiencing right now. Those are all 
uh, been resolved. And uh, you'll see next week, uh, it'll be just uh, just that much smoother. I think it's awesome right now that we do have 60 people on and, and all you're able to, or most you're able to just experience this as if you were just turning on the TV and clicking a channel. So um, yeah, so let me, uh, let me keep going uh, with, uh, with what is a business owner? And by the way, for the sake of this discussion, I, I'm just lumping entrepreneur and startup and business owner kind of all in the same thing because we all share these same uh, attributes, right? And uh, by the way, what um, <laughs> uh, what uh, what do you think? Use the chat. Tell me what you think. What kind of what do you think a business owner is, or uh, you know what kind of what kind of adjective you can add to uh, to, to business owner? And. Uh, <laughs> crazy yeah crazy yeah nuts exactly <laughs> masochistic all right keep going keep going keep leader all right you thanks Brenda. What, <laughs> what else inspired so, so i'm reading these people by the way if you're i'm reading this off the chat so you can keep an eye on the chat independent inspired risk taker okay daniel thank you motivated driven awesome mm -hmm. awesome yeah you guys are all right of course you are just you look in the mirror and you go what who is that person, right? Innovative, beautiful. Let me let me just go through some of the, uh, uh, you guys keep writing it in there. I am going to uh, go through this slide, it's risk taker. By the way, are we really risk takers? There, I, I've got a story I was gonna uh, tell you. My, my friend Bill uh, Ayers and I, we were out uh, vacationing with the family. Once a year, we would take all of our kids and we would go away for, take them to the lake. All the dads would take all the kids and we'd, off we'd go to the lake. and. Uh, uh, Bill and I are Bill and I are very very different. We got to a we got to a certain place on the island, and I climbed up to the top of a ledge, and I just jumped off into the water. And Bill was down in the water below, and uh, and afterwards he said he said, "Man, I cannot believe the risks that you took." And I said, well, "What do you mean?" He says, "Well, you just climbed to the top of this ledge, which is you know twenty feet high, and you just jumped in, and like what there could have been like rocks underneath." He says. I said, Bill, did you see what I did before that? He goes, no. I said, well, what I did was I went down to the little water below that, and I surfaced that. I went down to the bottom, and I checked it out for three or four minutes. I made sure that there was absolutely nothing there. I looked up, you know, knew where I was going to jump off, and then I went up, and then I jumped off. And so I think risk-taking, we think that we're taking risks, and we see people who are taking risks. Uh, we think that are taking risks. But I think if you if you if you step back a bit, the best entrepreneurs don't take much risks. They don't take first of all, they don't take risks that are big enough to kill them. That's the first that's the first rule. Right. And so when I think when I see people taking risks uh, or thinking that entrepreneurs, business owners are risk takers, I would say that we are. But it's it's measured risks. It's we measured have on the chat here that it means uh, Brent Jeffries is calculated risk taker. Calculated risk. That's exactly the. Uh, that's exactly right. So, yeah, thanks, Brad. Um, so, so let me keep going. Right, hard worker, absolutely in spades, independent. Many of you have said that. Some of you have spelt it differently. I can't remember if my there's an e in there or not or an a. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Absolutely, you're independent. Um, free thinker. You got to be a free thinker. Um, obsessive. Yeah, right. So there's that creative side and there's that obsessive side. And I know, I know, Steph, I know you to know that you're all creative, but you are obsessive as well, for sure. Totally guilty. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and then uh, un unemployable. I could not be an employee. You do not want to hire me as an employee, right? It's, uh, it's just, I'm, not that I'm going to be a bad, I'm going to do bad work. I'm going to do awesome work. Um, but I'm going to chafe. I just, I got to do my own thing in my own way, right? So that's, that's, that's a part of, it's a part of me. So you may be one or more of those, but and here's another definition, and that is ultimately <laughs> Stoiber. You know, you're killing me, man. Uh, good spellers. Yeah, not me. Ultimately, th this is a definition that I've been using for a number of years, and that is that an entrepreneur, a business owner, is someone who takes creativity and turns it into cash. And it's not a bad definition uh, because that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to take our creative process and the creativity in our team. And ultimately, if we're in business, we're trying to create some cash, some kind of bottom line for ourselves. The only problem with this definition is that that arrow is one way. And so what so many of us do is we take everything that we own, all our money, all our time, all our energy, and we, and we sacrifice everything else, relationships, family, 
and we just plunge it into this thing one way, trying to generate cash. And we find ourselves a year or 18 months or two years later, absolutely depleted and out of gas. This is, to me, this is an awful de definition. However, it can be improved very easily by simply doing this. And that is an understanding that absolutely we want to take our creativity and we want to turn it into cash. But we also want to build a, a little engine. And that little engine, the responsibility of that cash producing engine, it has a responsibility too. And its responsibility is to give us the time and the space to continue to be creative. And not only to continue to be creative because we want to be creative ice cream makers or dessert makers or marketing people like Mark Stoiber or uh, plumbers, it doesn't matter. But because the very nature of being a business owner requires creativity to deal with the issues that it surface as a business owner, the surface as a business owner, never mind the plumbing and the desserts and the rest and the recipes, right? There's all these business issues that are arise and it does take creativity. And we can't be creative if we're stressed if we're crushed by, by uh, cash flow pressure, if we're constantly worrying and fretting and all the rest of that stuff, right? And so what I want to do is I want to make sure that you understand that our responsibility is to be creative for sure, but then we need to build this engine separate from ourselves. And, that, and I, again, I want to make that differentiation as well. And that engine's responsibility is to now give us the Saturday mornings the Wednesday evenings, whatever it is that we can put our hands behind our, lace our hands behind our head, sit back and think about the business, think about the issues and think about them in a creative way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Wonderful. And uh, awesome. It's great having a sidekick. Great having this disembodied voice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I know. I was thinking, did I freak you out? Did you forget that no. I was here? No, no, no. I think it's, I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. Um, yeah. So there's this, so there is the owner at the middle and the owner, I want to make sure that we understand that the owner is someone who works on the business. This is critical for you to understand is that there's a separation. When you're not, um, when you're just an employee, when you're working for someone else, you're just like the engine, the ship's engineer. You're down below and you're doing stuff. You're working in the business. You're working in the ship. You're making things go and making things run and you're optimizing this and you're doing all that stuff, right? But you're doing it because you know that there's another persona that's out there and that is the ship's captain. And the ship's captain is up on the bridge, able to see everything that's going on and working on the business. The, uh, the ship's captain, their job is to look ahead to anticipate, to set the direction and plan the steps that are needed to get there. And then of course, to, to um, communicate that direction and that vision and those steps to everybody else. Now, as a 74.1% of business owners uh, are by themselves. And so we have to have wear these two hats simultaneously. Um, and uh, But it's critical that we do. And it's critical that you set aside some time every week, set aside some time every day to create this new persona for yourself. That's the business owner who works on the business. And that's why I'm so glad that you're here today. And that's why I need you to commit. I need, you need you, I don't need you to commit. You need you to commit this one hour twice a week so that you can work on your own business. Very, very different roles. Whew. All right. And now let's talk about the world of business owners. What's going on? What's going on out there, right? Um, first of all, some, some, I'm just going to go back and forth here, some random stuff. 100% of net new jobs are created by businesses under five years old. Read that again. 100% of new jobs are created by businesses that are under five years old. Big companies don't create businesses. Big organizations don't create businesses. They do not create a single business. It's all of us. We are the economic engines of the economy for the country and our community. We are also way more innovative on a per capita basis than, uh, than large businesses. Innovation oriented small businesses generate 16 times the number of patents per employee as large firms. We are in, there's that creativity in spades. And uh, we're at the heart of our uh, communities, right? There's their like, there's Heritage Plumbing, I think, Heritage Plumbing, Heating and Cooling, right? Who's uh, who's who's supporting this baseball team, supporting these kids, supporting uh, jobs 
making sure that our houses are hot when they need to be hot and cool when they need to be cool, right? But but we still fail at a very high rate. And what we know is that overwhelmingly it's because of cash flow problems, which is going to be a theme that goes through every single one of the 26 days that we're going to spend together. This is it's it's tragic because it's just so avoidable. But here's the silver lining. The silver lining is that they're failing, businesses are failing at a, at a, a lower rate than, uh, than they used to back in 1977. So what's happening is that, uh, and this, these, are the, these, are the, uh, these, are, these are stats that came from a, a very detailed study. Uh, owners are better educated. They make better upfront assessments of business opportunities. They select more successful sectors and they make better use of technology. And so, you know, what's the lesson here? The lesson is that you people are doing exactly what you need to do, which is to learn about business so that you can make these better decisions, select appropriate sectors and make better use of technology. And so we're going to talk about all of that over the course of the next 25 weeks. Right. Uh, another statistic that. Um, this is the age of businesses down here in years. So one, two, three, four, five plus. And this is profitability as a percentage of revenue down here. And what you're seeing is that in the first three years of business, of business since you, when you start a business, your business is not going to be very profitable. It's going to have no profit, negative profit maybe. And then it's going to start to creak out a little bit of profit in the first one, zero, one, one, two, three years. But then something magical happens in the from year three to year four. Profitability jumps up. This is on average, right? But profitability jumps up from 2% up to 8%. And then it just keeps it keeps climbing. And then, of course, it plateaus. But but there's this magical thing that happens in four years. And I think it's because it takes three years to get to to learn what we need to learn. So if you can imagine going becoming a chef. I mean, my son's a Red Seal chef, right? It took him two years and then a year of kind of figuring things out, right? An undergrad degree is three years. Anything, uh, learning a trade. You're typically three years, maybe four years, right? All these things take three years to become reasonably a reasonable master at it. And that's what I think happens in businesses as well. We figure out kind of who we are, what we're trying to offer. We try to find matching customers. We try to find our marketing. We try to find the product, the pricing, all those types of things. And we either die, we either go out of business, or if you're left standing in your fourth year, guess what? You're going to do real well. So my job here, my goal here, I think our collective goal here is to try to take that curve and move it this way, right? Let's learn the things we need to learn in the next 25 uh, sessions so that we can have that happen. We don't have to wait till our fourth year in order to make that happen. Let's start making that stuff happen today, okay? I would definitely agree with that four-year mark. And I've watched fellow colleagues of mine, uh, food business, food, like food industry mostly because I have my thumb on and my pulse on the food, food industry here in Toronto, especially, but ones that I know in the U S ones that I know actually in Vancouver and, and Victoria and out West. And it really is that four year. Uh, and I, I started to see that at about my two year. And so I started to learn, um, how can I fast track this? But by that point, even for me with four years and that in Pleasantville is what I'm talking about. Everybody. It's my ice cream company, especially with Pleasantville. Um, it's, it's fascinating to me that once I learned the, about the four year curve, I tried to, to expedite it in the second year and being a creative and not having even something like this, you and I didn't know each other at that point. It was like scrambling because again, when you're in second year and you don't have that business background or you don't know what you don't know, you don't know that, uh, you know, business is such a huge arena and you just want to keep the business afloat. So I appreciate you even saying that because that was like one of those Loch Ness monster myths. I think that uh, that everybody needed to hear, so that now we can pull that goal closer for yeah. sure. So thank you. Good. No, you're welcome. Hey, thanks for chiming in. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. I'm here. <laughs> Um, other factors that are going on out there are that the cost to starting a business keep dropping. And this is just something that, uh, you know, it's, it, none of these are, are negatives or positives. It's, it's depending on, on what side of the coin you're on, right? Um, it's, it's easier for competitors to start and come into your uh, business. So you need to know that as well. But it's also easier for you to harness some of the tools. Some of the tools are like what used to, cost, what used to be impossible to get, like if face-to-face. This tool right here, used to, you couldn't get it five years ago. And now it's free. 
Uh, and so that helps you, helps me to transform the way in which I'm doing business. And hopefully it helps me to deliver things in a way that is, you know, ahead of my competitor or doing it differently and better. I think rather than, again, competition, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do things better for my customers and my clients. I think that's the key point. Um, anyway, costs to start a business and all the tools that are needed to do the things that we need to do, they keep, they keep dropping. And in addition to that, um, innovation, which is, which is a part of driving that down, is absolutely relentless. Um, and again, good thing if you have, you're harnessing innovation and a bad thing if you're not. And what I'm going to be doing as I go through here is I'll be sharing all the tools that I use uh, in order to uh, uh, support uh, my, my innovation is I hope you share your tools as well with the, with the rest of us. Again, good news or bad news. Um, yeah. Pace of change is accelerating. So not only is innovation relentless, but then innovation helps people to leverage their stuff and it creates, it helps to create more innovation and more, right? And so this pace of change is accelerating. This is in, in addition to everything else that's going on around us, right? So uh, again, it's good news or bad news. In addition to that, I think that the nature of business itself, the, the structures of business are changing fundamentally. And I've been feeling this for probably 10 years or 15 years uh, because not only am I in business, but I also, I see so many businesses out there, but I also teach this stuff and I feel this profoundly. Um, and I just read a fantastic book called uh, The New Capitalist Manifesto. And I'll send you a link to this book. It's awesome. If you've got, it's easy to read as well. Uh, but this is a very, very insightful uh, uh, person, uh, Umer Haik, I think is, is not, I don't know if it's, that's how you pronounce it or not, but that's how I would read it. Uh, very insightful. And uh, I'm going to take you through a couple of things that he's saying, but, but um, what he's basically saying is that the way in which that we have been thinking just macroscopically about the nature of business is putting us all at profound risk. And he's saying that there, there are ways now to start to change how we approach business. And I'll give you just an exa uh, example that the way we have been doing it has been unsustainable at a global and societal and community basis as well. So here's the traditional way that businesses work, right? We take resources. So we look at a, a value chain, right? We grab resources. We just we dig them out of the ground or cut them down or whatever we do. We then process them. And there's several people that process them. Um, and then ultimately that resources are consumed. And along the way, there's stuff that's just waste. And so, you know, if you're if you're cutting down trees, you're cutting off branches and you're just tossing them out. If you're fish, you're cutting off the heads and the tails and the fins and bones and you just throw them away, right? Uh, and ultimately, because as consumers, we think we want a perfect fillet, fillet of fish. We think that our customers want a perfect fillet of fish or a perfect, you know, tree or whatever it happens to be, right? All kinds of, but you see this going on in your own business. And with that, and what happens is, is that, we don't actually place a value on the inputs and we don't place a value on the waste. We simply just, we just dig it up and it's free and then we just throw it away and it yeah, costs someone to take it away, but that's free as well, right? But ultimately what happens is this used to work in the good old days when there was just a couple of million of us on the planet, but now um, there are 7 billion of us. And because all of us are still thinking this way and doing this, or businesses are designed to do this, it's what it's what's way our income statement is structured. What it what happens is is that the the, the cutting down the the lack of costs of resources and the lack of cost of waste puts a burden onto society and onto the globe and onto our climate and everything else that is now starting to rise up to bite us. And so what started to happen is that we we can look at things in a different way in a circular way. So rather than having a value chain that goes one way, we start to create value circles. And I've been, I've been uh, books like this, some of the projects that I've been working on in the last two, three years, where I've actually seen, for example, one organization, they were paying half a million dollars to have organic waste taken away, taken out of their business. And uh, we sat down and we did some analysis over a couple of months. And it turned out that they could generate a million in revenue by taking that waste and converting it into something that was absolutely positive. It wasn't just going to go to a landfill and get burned or get tossed in the ocean and, and polluted. It was actually going to be converted into absolutely useful stuff. Um, and so from a half million cost to a million in revenues is a million and a half dollar difference. I think those are opportunities 
are available increasingly on smaller and smaller and smaller ways. And we as entrepreneurs need to be aware of that type of thinking. So that's just one way of doing it. And again, I could, I mean, I could talk about this for a lot more and the book does go into it. So it's value chain into value cycle. It's value proposition. Hey, customer, here's what I've got. Take it or leave it to value conversation, sitting down with a customer and trying to figure out exactly who they are, what they want, what they need, how it works, right? And what you do, being much more open kimono about the whole conversation and they with you and starting to build these relationships that are much richer, much richer. Uh, protectionism versus self-disruption. Protectionism, which is I'm doing this and I got to keep anyone else from doing that. That's the way big businesses work using the patents and, and all kinds of ways of doing it. Uh, you go to business, MBA teaches you a thousand ways of protecting what you are doing. Um, going to self-disruption, which is, hey, you know what? I'm not going to worry about my competition. I'm not going to worry about protecting uh, myself or my competitors. I'm going to keep innovating in a way like the 3M company, which I wrote about uh, and did a blog, I think a video about just a couple of weeks back, the 3M company. They're continually disrupting themselves and creating new stuff continuously and not worrying about anybody else. In, in addition to having deep conversations with their customers. And then productivity versus productivity, which is just squeezing what you can out of what you're doing into creativity, which is doing it things, doing uh, things in new ways. So I think, the, the, again, just the point here is that the nature of business itself is changing. And we can do two things. We can uh, choose to just go along and think about ourselves and not worry about these things. Or we can start to put these things like a ship's captain does, look out ahead, see what the potential is, and start to factor these things in because – there are benefits to doing these things right now in terms of uh, increased revenues, increased market opportunities, increased products, reduced cost, et cetera. Uh, but also we protect ourselves against downstream regulatory changes, downstream costs that are going to be incurred on industries uh, that, that, that don't do this. And so we don't want to be blindsided by, the, by those things, right? If we're going to do it, might as well do it now. Okay, and the good news is, at three minutes to the top of the hour, is that everything that you'll learn in this course is going to help you with everything that I just talked about. Um, and the way to start off is, uh, we're going to start off with a baseline. So remember I said that we're going to separate ourselves in our, head, in our minds from our business. There's us and there's our business. And there's really no way for us to make significant improvements on our business. Again, forget about our ego being wrapped up in our business. There are no ways for us to make profound differences in our business without trying to figure out where we are. As my old ship captain, my ship uh, instructor, John Fairweather says, if you do not know where you are, stop the boat. And I would say, and why? Because you're going to hit something. If you don't know where you are, you're going to hit something. You're going to go in the wrong direction, etc. And that's what we're going to do right now is I've got a uh, survey put together. I'll send it to you. Uh, right after this, and uh, I hope you go through it. It's 10 questions, and you're going to get scored out of 20. And forget about what the score is. It doesn't matter. All it is is we're going to take a starting point. It doesn't matter how what the score is, the number is, or how well you do. That's not the point. Here are some of the questions. We'll go through seven of the questions. Are you satisfied with your current monthly sales? Yes, I am. No, I'm not. I don't know what my monthly sales are. Just answer the question. Simple. Are you satisfied with your gross margin? Yes, no, I don't know what a gross margin is. I don't know what it is. Are you satisfied with your year over year sales growth rate? Yes, no, I don't know. Do you have a well-defined focus for your business for the next three to 12 months? Yes or no, simple. Do you have a roadmap? You have a step-by-step -step guide for your business for the next 91 days? Yes or no, simple. Oops. Do you review your financial statements every month? Yes, I do. No, I don't. They're created annually. Or, huh, I don't know what a financial statement is. Just, just answer, <laughs> answer honestly. And how do your customers feel about your business? My customers love our business. They, yeah, they like our business. They, customers hate our business. Or I don't know how my customers feel about my business, right? And we're going to talk about these things and get you plugged into your customers in a, in a, in a significant way in the next few episodes. Okay. 
in um, in a little while, in a, about an hour, you'll be able to go to businesspro.tv. You'll be able to scroll down, and I'm, I'm going to be putting down a get caught up section in there. And I'll put up the uh, links to everything, all the resources that I've mentioned, and to the uh, recording of the video. So it's uh, right at the top of the hour. That's the end of uh, this session for today. Again, my thanks for you for being here. I love the fact that you're uh, you're here. Love the fact that you're going to go there, scroll down, click on the link, and uh, and uh, do do that, that self-assessment. You're going to get an email with your score and with the answers to your questions. And then we're going to do that again in 91 days and uh, see what kind of change you've made in your, in your business next time. So on Thursday, five o'clock PM, uh, Pacific time, eight o'clock Eastern, we're going to, we're going to talk about the big picture, aspiration values and authenticity, because it's no longer good enough to build a better mousetrap. People want to know the backstory. Who are you? What's your relationship to mice? Is your mouse trap humane? Why did you decide to create it? Does it do anything besides trap mice? For example, does it share the information that it collects with anybody else? Not only do potential customers want to know this stuff, but so do your potential staff and so does your community. And increasingly, your strategy, your approach, your marketing, your sales, all depends on you being able to speak authentically about this stuff. So it's absolutely critical that we kind of get inside your own heart and your own mind first. And then we're going to translate that into the uh, the values and the aspiration that you have uh, for your business. Okay. So for those of you who join in late, um, you'll be able to see us again uh, at f2f.live slash Alex G on uh, Thursday at 8 p.m. And um, go, go to uh, businesspro.tv and uh, you'll be able to get the recordings and the assets from uh, this session. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is um, if you are, some of you are in there, I got four people, Brenda Pathways, which is John, I think, Lisa, and I've got somebody called Anon in. And I'm going to start to, to I'm going to start to bring you in. We're going to bring Steph back. We're going to start to bring you in. And uh, we'll just talk about whatever you want to talk about. Um, and uh, for those of you, uh, yeah, hey, John. And uh, for those of you who are happy to, who want to join in, just there's an ask to join button down at the bottom, right about there, I think. And if you click on that, it'll uh, allow Chrome permission to access your mic and your camera. And then uh, it'll give you a three, two, one, and you'll join in my queue. There you go. So Barrington just did that, at least with his mic. And so uh, you'll join my queue and then I can just drag you in. That's what I'm going to do starting right now. All right. Uh, let's do this. Okay, so there was uh, Steph. Just yeah. reading all your comments and looking over everything. Okay. And it's like great. everybody's in really enjoying this and is super excited, as are we. And I want to let everybody know, too, that I'm not just like – sitting here for comic relief. I actually, I, I, as I said, I have ice cream company, but I also, Alex knows this already. I'm also transitioning to building my mentoring practice. And I also have a women's wellness collective that I'm going to build, but I'm holding off and I'm holding off because I wanted to go through this course so I can use them as case studies so I can do it the right way this time. So I'm learning like all of you. Um, but I'm also here on the other side. If anybody has any questions that Alex can't ask, or you have anything specific, I'm happy to help out as I can. So. Hey, thanks. Now, listen, say, say I'm going to bring John on because I know uh, John's John's also in Toronto. I think he's a neighbor of yours. Um, oh, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to get together and talk about you. Yeah. Hey, yeah, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Here's John. So again, for people who don't understand this technology, all I'm just doing is I'm just dragging uh, someone in. So anyone in the world can just, I can just drag them in. And because they've got zero latency, they're just immediately become a part of the show. And now they can be seen and heard by everybody. So John, you can be seen and heard by everybody. All right. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. So what, do you have a question or a comment or what do you want to tell us, man? Well, I just, um, I think what you're doing is fantastic. And I love this, the tool that you're doing it with. So I hope everybody starts really appreciating the true extent of the interactivity that will come from this and, and the dynamic it can make in, in changing how we learn. It's an awesome tool. I've, you know, I've been using it uh, since I, uh, in one way or another since October or November of last year, because uh, I've been involved with the with the two my two co-founders, and uh, it has changed. Uh, well, for, it's changed the tools I use, but it's absolutely changed how I uh, teach, 
how I uh, coach, how I mentor, how I yeah. talk with family. Like it's just it's totally, it's completely different, right? Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, good. So, and you're going to be using it in the next uh, little while, is that yeah, right? Yeah, we're using it. Uh, what day are we? Tuesday, two days. We're going to put it to a test with uh, hopefully over a thousand people. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, so. my tech people, I, I, I think. <laughs> I think my tech people are watching, my co-founders and uh, uh, Gage and Dan. And so, uh, you know, we know John's um, email, so we'll have to touch base with you because the beta that the, the release that we thought we'd have for you is a day or two. Is yeah, yeah we, we know that. And as I said, we got another one coming up in a couple of weeks. So I know we're working out some problems with um, connecting HD cameras to the current laptops we've been using at the venue. So. It might get bumped a week or two, but it's, we're, we're, we're committed to going down this direction. And awesome. I agree with what you're saying. It's just what it's changing the dynamic to mentoring, coaching, teaching, doing classroom. It's just taking it to a whole new place. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. That's awesome. Now, do you, what's your business, John? Uh, the, well, the business we're doing the, the this test with is an IR business, so investor relations, focusing on small market cap companies all across uh, North America. And oh, wow. it's going to be reaching out to where it's traditionally only being able to reach the Toronto community, the brokers that are local. And yeah, we yep. did that streaming on YouTube. We did some of that stuff, Periscope, and it never worked for the client. So when this came up, I, I called them up and said, hey, you, you, this just changed the game. Now, thousands of brokers that couldn't participate that want to can now be part of this. Yeah, exactly. It's awesome. Well, that's great. Listen, John, I'm going to bring in, uh, I got Lisa is up next, I think. So I'm going to bring in Lisa Excellent. and uh, I'll keep you on. And then I may just drop you off. Uh, I've, Not a problem. Again, I'm a tiny bit nervous at the tech, but I think we can do four people. And so again, people just, just what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, uh, Lisa, if you hope you're ready because you're coming in next. Uh, I'm just going to drag, click on Lisa's icon and I'm just going to dr drop her. And this technology does everything else. It What it does is it just brings her in. Hooks her up. Hey. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know you guys had turned on. <laughs> so Lisa, Lisa, you're live. Hey, that's I've talked to Lisa. Well, you're down in the States somewhere, aren't you? She's on the phone. Oh, she's on the phone. Okay. I think I'll, what we'll do is we'll pull Lisa out. <laughs> we'll bring her. So I just pulled Lisa back into the queue. We can get her later. And I'm going to bring in Brenda. I think Brenda's somewhere in the Yukon. All these friends of mine, I, people I've been back and forth. Thinking, Brenda. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Where are you? I'm in Fort Smith. It's actually in the NWT. NWT, because uh, weren't you going moose hunting with your with your son or That's something like that? Next week. Next week. Oh, it's next week. Okay. Yeah, so I was happy to hear that you were having it uh, uh, taped. <laughs> that's that's awesome. And what wh what latitude are you at? Oh, you're like 55, right, or 56? Yeah, the 60th parallel, actually. 60th parallel. Yeah. And what's the the this the uh, what's the Arctic Circle? 66. Is it? So, I'm not. Sure. All that's the cool. geography questions. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so thank you. Uh, you're helping me. I'm, there. Minds. I'm, at the, I'm at the 49th latitude, and Brenda's at the 60th. So the the Canada U.S. border is at 49. And I'm Brenda, at 44, I think. Okay. Yeah, you're. That's right. You're yeah, so. So Brenda's at sixty. So that's eleven like degrees of latitude. You're like eight hundred miles north. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So you get you get you get like uh, a great northern uh, uh, lights, don't you? Yeah. I actually, I just you know, one of the dangers I I realize of being an entrepreneur is like we're sort of incessant multitaskers, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, we are. Yes, we all yes. are. And yes. it uh, while I was. Um, listening i decided oh i want to do a facebook post so i actually posted uh northern lights oh That's good nice. oh like a picture. You know what? i'm not going to do that on a regular basis <laughs> but okay. it's hard and not it's to it's hard not to have so many things in your head at the same time no i know i know it's like uh, uh what, tell us about your business because i think you got an awesome oh business. thank you thank you yeah yeah i'm i'm making hand and foot warmers and so I'm using uh, beaver fur, and they're an all-natural, reusable, sustainable product that is new to market. So as lots of challenges around that. But yeah. I think one of the things that excites me most is is really the conservational part of it, where we uh, we uh, are closer to nature, our, our basic 
I go into stores and I see all these disposable throwaway hand warmers and yeah. these fur hand warmers that I make actually trap your heat. And it's something that has been used for centuries with Aboriginal people. And I'm really excited about my business and I have an online store, retail stores, and um, I'm just so excited that you're doing this, Alex. Thank you. Oh, no, you're very welcome. Hey, it's a pleasure to have you. And I just, I'm loving it. I mean, hey, we're all Canadians right now. So I, I'd like to get some of the, the, some other people out there. But we just happen to be the Canadian contingent. But Canada is the second biggest country in the world. And so the two Toronto people who are over there, I think, right down wow. there, they're 5,500. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, this is a sample of your product, uh, Brenda. Alex. Right? So I'm just going to show. So you guys are, you guys are still going to be there. But what I get to do is this. So my guests are still there, and they can see and hear everything. But this is a sample of Brenda's product, and this is, uh, yeah, it's awesome stuff. I have, whoops, I got two of them here. Oh, I just dropped one on the floor. And anyway, I got two of them here, and you just you, you just put them. You just hold on them. They're like it's awesome. This is like nature's like hand warmer. Yeah, totally love it. So uh, well done. Thank you. Well Thank done. you. Yeah, you could check that out. You know, can't help this, but it's uh, AuroraHeat.ca. What was yeah. that again? Sorry. I kind of, you know, when you were talking about the backstory, Alex, that yeah. is critical. And it is important to be authentic about what you are doing. And yeah. is one, one of our earlier conversations, because I'll admit I've met Alex before, but it, it, uh, never in person. We've never met in person. Very important. Never in person, only like this and only a few times. But one yeah. of the things I realized, as you say, is that you, we really need a story about what, what it is we're doing and why we're doing it. And I think that's something um, that is very affirming to me because I feel really strongly about my story, but I know all of you have that, that as well. It's awesome. Hey, listen, I just put your, um, Brenda, I just put your URL into the chat, which I think is over there. Can you make sure that I spelled it properly? You did. Well done. I did. Awesome. So anyone who wants these, like they're Thank super I freaking cool. That. What's that? I appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, and the packaging as well. Like you've really got her nailed. So, uh, so well done. Listen, I'm going to pull a couple of you out. Uh, but before you go, I just want to show people another view. So what I can do here as well, I can, if I want to keep my guests there, I can do a kind of a CNN thing. I can take over the, you know, the main stage, but I can have my guests. Are they over there? I can't really tell which way they are. Other but side. Other side. Yeah. So they're over there. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so just just to let you know, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say goodbye to Brenda and NWT at uh, I'm going to pull her out, and I'm going to say John, thank you so much. Awesome to see you. Nice to see and you too. Congratulations. You and I are, are going to talk more we're about those thousand uh, those thousand audience years. We're going to we're yep. going to get take care of you, and I'm going to bring in uh, I think Barrington who is in here on a mic only. Oh, he's still there. Oh, maybe we lost him, and we'll try another one. Oh. We're losing these. Oh, there's someone called Anon. I don't know if we have a mic or a or a. No, oh, there's Barrington. Barrington. Yeah, a few people have said that that uh, their names have dropped out. Yeah, that's that'll be resolved in the next day or two. So Barrington's gone, and uh, whoever this Anon is, I'll just we're gonna get rid of those. As, we're gonna just drop them out as well. So well, listen. There, were, there were a couple questions. Just maybe you want to clarify if you didn't already, because I know there's been a lot said. But just for some of the people that are trying to log in on an iOS, uh, just if you want to, if for that kind of stuff. Yeah, sure. So awesome. So thanks for that, uh, Steph. So um, on iOS, Apple just released today iOS 11, and uh, iOS 11 now supports some of the fundamental protocols that uh, we need. Apple. They're pretty particular sometimes and pretty stubborn about embracing some of the protocols that the rest of the world uses. Uh, but they've bowed to our pressure and uh, they have now embraced uh, those, some of those protocols. So iOS 11 released today means your iPhones and iPads, when they move up to iOS 11, will be able to run the next version of face-to-face. Uh, -face. So face-to-face -face in the next um, release, uh, which will be a few days from now, a couple of days from now, uh, you'll be able to watch uh, all of the stuff on your uh, iOS, on your iPad, on your iPhone. And when Mac OS gets updated on the 25th of September, so that's uh, next week, Mac OS uh, will include changes to the Safari browser. So now Safari browser on any device will be able to 
participate uh, with what's going on. Firefox uh, needs to, we've got to tune up uh, a couple of things on our end of things, but we'll support Firefox. Edge has also been making changes to support these protocols. All the people in the world are making it so that face-to-face -face can run on any device uh, in the browser uh, anywhere in the world. So that's coming today, next week, and the weekend, the week after. And I'll, I'll tell you just as you're doing that, because I wanted to make sure, because I got a few screenshots. There's a couple of friends of mine that have actually tried to follow in and log in and all that kind of stuff, and they couldn't. But I just checked, and I've got it. You can't really see it, but I've got it. I have. I'm a beta tester for Apple. By the way, nobody do that. But uh, I'm a beta tester, and I signed in with my iOS 11, so I it, it is working if you have that updated platform now. So. Come on, really? Yeah. It's, I can I could do it, but I don't want there to be any kind of feedback. But oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. I've got it. It's it's telling me to like log in. That's the login button. So okay, good. Well, so you know, it's, must... up, it's up there, and that's Safari, by the way. So I didn't even check on Chrome. Okay, that's awesome. All right, uh, Barrington's back. Let me just go and see if we can get him in. Hi, hello, dude. How are you? I'm great. I'm from Saint Lucia, in Saint the Caribbean. Lucia. Man, you guys have had a windy, stormy, rainy. Yeah, it's been rough. Um, but luckily, St. Lucia didn't get any of the hurricane. Really? Um, we had a, a, a close down day yesterday and today. It just opened up today. But wow. we didn't get any damages. Our friends in Dominica got it really bad. Wow, yeah, no, and they're, they're, they're getting hammered again. Awesome. Yes, awesome. yes, they've gotten hammered twice in two years. Yeah, yeah, it's awful. And listen, I've been to St. Lucia, and it is absolutely, I've only been there once, and it is my my total dream to uh, to sail down there. You live in an absolutely beautiful part of the world. I think Victoria, Canada is beautiful, but ain't, ain't got nothing on St. Lucia. Well, I like the warm weather, that's for sure. <laughs> Well, I, I remember uh, you got a couple of mountains there, and I remember uh, climbing, hiking to the very top of the mountain. At the very top there, there was this extraordinary, extraordinary flower, which didn't appear, it only appeared one at the very top. So I've got yeah. a picture of that at a great time. What do you do in, in uh, St. Lucia, Barrington? Well, I'm a, a chartered accountant, and um, about three years ago, two years ago, I left my, my job, and I started helping a lot of smaller companies. But I got the root awakening. I have a very much, I have a passion to help businesses with their financial hurdles. Yep. But I found myself working on my clients' hurdles while leaving mine, getting mine into trouble. So I was very passionate about helping them, but I wasn't paying attention to my own affairs. Oh my so goodness. I had to scale back, focus on my 80-20 rule, take 20% of my clients, refocus. And now I'm listening to your course to see how I could bridge that gap between working in your business versus on your business. Man, we you're in the right place, Bernard. And, and it's yeah. how did you how did you hear about uh, uh, Business Pro TV? Oh, I I I have been experimenting with Stratpad. Um, our Good. whole system is online. We use QuickBooks online. We scan bills into the system online. We do a lot of automation online with our clients. And I I I got wind of Stratpad. I've been experimenting with it for a while. And um, you just pop up about a week or two ago, and I saw Business Pro TV, and I just subscribed. That's awesome. And hey, listen, it's a pleasure to it's a pleasure to have you here. And uh, you, you've got some great internet down there. I mean, I know some places have got um, some places down there have got some sketchy internet. I say down there because you're like, what's your latitude? What we're on fourteen, fourteen degrees. Thirteen. Wow. Yes. Oh man. <laughs> Yeah, it's this it's this time of year when I when uh, you know we're 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 coming into winter up here in Canada. Next time, uh, let's run it down there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Alex, um, one of my goals is that when I've refocused my business, is to to look at the possibility of I'm looking at this program as an evaluation because my real goal is to is to set up businesses in Saint Lucia and help the small businesses grow. So Beautiful. I would be exploring with with our links to the Chamber of Commerce and stuff to see if you could come on board. But I wanted to go through the program to see what you do first before, oh, before we explore that. Well, I'm delighted to have you here, Barrington. Is there any Thank questions you. that you could you want to ask me or, uh, or Steph? I think the main thing I am trying to understand and I um, over the course of this program is, is to just balance off the work-life balance and growing the business. That is the biggest problem. I find that 
if I focus on anyone, the other suffers. So I am having that little problem with it. I have a, a multitude of clients who are willing to work with me, but I am really trying to pace myself and get the process right. That's the problem I'm having now. Yeah. Well, you know, here's the thing, right? And having been a consultant for a lot of years and like you, Oh, my heart is always with my clients. And so I always want to, you know, help them out. And I think I can help them out. And, but what I realized is that, like, I used to work back in the day for uh, um, Price Waterhouse Coopers. And, you know, we're charging, you know, 800 bucks an hour or whatever the heck it is. There's just, there's just, there's just a whole swath of clients that simply you just can't uh, address. And so what exactly. I, what I learned though is that what you can do is you can create a hierarchy of options that you know some people who are wanting or willing to pay for you know 800 bucks an hour awesome you know you can do that one on one but then what you can do is you can do uh, workshops you can do online things it's one of the reasons why i created stratpad because there's so many people out there who uh, i tried to help them with their thinking because stratpad has a 58 page book right inside it about about some of the things we're going to be talking about right aspirations and values and and strategy and that type of thing right mm -hmm. And so the same thing with, with you and your practice, you know, if you can create workshops, if you can create articles, if you can, there's a bunch of different ways of you can, uh, of you being able to uh, address a, a larger number of small businesses in St. Lucia. And quite frankly, the ones that are, you know, not able to afford you right now, but are willing to come to a workshop or willing to, you know, watch an online video or something like that, if you can help them get a little bit stronger, those people will become your next tier clients and your next yeah. tier clients, right? So, yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so keep coming back. And uh, and next time you come back, we want you to share a picture or something like that from uh, from St. Lucia. So that, <laughs> I'll do that. I'll do that. Because yeah. we're just gonna we're just going into winter, man. Like it's just awful. <laughs> before you before you but two things before you, before you log off. One, somebody just said MJ just said that it snowed in Edmonton today. So let's let's just let's just not bring that kind of karma into the chat and the stuff yet. We, nobody needs any snow over here in the east. <laughs> Um, and the only th other thing I was going to say to you in terms of work-life balance, I actually end up talking about this quite a bit when I talk about mentoring. And one thing I wanted to say to you is that every entrepreneur has, and I'm sure we can, we're going to expand on this kind of stuff later on, but I, I tend to focus a lot more on sort of like a, a I'm a spiritual life coach, holistic, a whole bunch of things. So I tend to spoke, focus on that kind of stuff. And one of the things I talk about though, when I do talk about to entrepreneurs is I say, you know, every single one of us, when we go into our business, we always have a mission or a value that we are led by. Mm -hmm. And so if you can evaluate what you do every day, some things in business you necessarily can't evaluate, you kind of have to do some things you can delegate. But if you can, if you have a, if you know it already, and you have an underlying fundamental mission or value that you hold yourself by, um, mm -hmm. For example, mine every single day, every, my personal one every single day is to be better. So I evaluate everything I do, and Alex has really helped me with balancing this, is that I, I contrast and compare everything that I do with my mission. So is this going to help me be better, or is it not? And with my business, especially Pleasantville, with my business, um, it was uh, to be of service or to connect more people or something to that effect. So I always compared and contrast what I was doing with my mission and my value to make sure that at least if you're doing it and you you do that you evaluate it in that sense yeah you don't feel so drained with it and so that when so you can start to have a little bit more time and a little bit more effort and energy to do the things that you have to do even though you know we don't always want to do what we have to do so yeah. but uh, it's just maybe a little tip to, to to start getting a little bit more balance so okay thanks and it's a nice segue, by the way, um, uh, Steph, into uh, Thursday, because that's uh, those are the types of things we're going to start to talk about on Thursday. So great. I need that. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, I'm going to say goodbye to um, uh, to Steph, and I'm going to say goodbye to Barrington. Thank you. You can come back on the show anytime uh, with uh, with good news, Barrington. And, okay, um, I'll do that. Yeah, and if I don't see uh, if there's no uh, other. Uh, one who wants to get on here. I'm going to sign off with uh, Steph. I'm going to sign off to you first. Okay. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you everybody else. I left my information in the chat, but if uh, I look forward to seeing everybody every week and and continuing this, this is great. Thank you so much, Alex, for doing this again. Hey, thanks for being here. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, for those of you who uh, need a reminder, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. 
just check in at f2f.live slash Alex G. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to wait until uh, the recording at uh, YouTube is uh, is finished, and which will take about five, 10 minutes. And then I will send you all, all an email with all the resources that we've talked about today, including the recording. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again on Thursday. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, it's been a tremendous pleasure uh, being uh, in front of this camera and seeing all of you face to face. See you again soon.